Three and a half million miles this orbiter traveled before it uh, landed just after noon Eastern time. Uh, Winston, again, you're the only one of us who has experienced that space, uh, that feeling of space, and then coming back down right to the Earth rather than a splashdown. As we see the steps coming down again, uh, we can expect now maybe that the seven members of the Discovery crew are, are going to be coming down. But, Winston, back to my original question, what's the feeling like in their bodies? Well, the feeling, again, is one of, of excitement, one of joy, one of being tired, because these folks have been up for a long time now. They've probably been awake 16, 18 hours, and before they get another night's sleep, it will probably be about 24 hours of being awake. But they're excited about being back. They're excited about seeing the family and seeing friends. And again, the sheer joy of a mission well done. That's really an incredible feeling. It feels pretty good to be up there in space. And as you've noted, the, the crew really bonds. They become each other's That's best right. friends. But it's also nice to get back here with uh, some other folks. It's always nice to get back. You know, when you're in orbit, at least for our short duration shuttle flights, you want to stay as long as you can because you know it's not going to last very long. So you savor every single minute. But it's always good to get back home, and it's exciting uh, to be back and see the family, see friends. Now, John, do you think that John Glenn will uh, <coughs> ask for another flight uh, after this one just to complete <laughs> his uh, medical test, or do you think that maybe enough's enough? I think he's already <laughs> made it clear that he'd be happy to go up again, but it seems that uh, he'll probably let let the next flight go to some younger guy, maybe like you, Jim. That's right. Trace Gallagher is still at Mission Control in Houston and is able to join us now with a look at the mission from a thousand or so miles away. Trace? I think what we just saw, John, is the first time that seven ground technicians just got a national ovation uh, due to that, <laughs> those wa them walking down the steps. We should note that pack of gum you talked about that Annie Glenn has been carrying now since John Glenn left. She was carrying it in her shirt pocket. She said she wanted to keep it close to her heart. And when he gets home and the family gets back together, they will all have one stick of gum. A couple of quick notes for you. You were talking about the shuttle Endeavour will be the first shuttle to go up and drop off the second piece to the International Space Station. Shuttle Discovery will be the third shuttle to go up. It'll go back up in May. So Shuttle Discovery with a quick turnaround time of about uh, six months. 3.68 million miles, 3,680,000 miles the shuttle went. That is exactly 3,600,002 miles further than John Glenn went on his first mission, which was just over 78,000 miles. We should also note that over the past seven or eight days, they have been upping their bedtime. The shuttle crew has been going to bed about 40 minutes earlier every night, so they've been getting up earlier. In essence, when they landed today, instead of being on Florida time, they are actually on European time. So aside from adjusting to gravity or readjusting to gravity, I should say, uh, the shuttle astronauts might also be suffering a little bit of shuttle lag. Uh, NASA just told us about 15 minutes ago, in case we're keeping track, that the astronauts would be out in 10 minutes, so clearly they are a little bit late. John? All right, Trace Gallagher at Mission Control in Houston. Thanks very much. <laughs> we're told that the person who marched up the steps and is now in the crew transport vehicle with the seven astronauts is the gentleman we were speaking to about half an hour ago or so, Dan Golden, the administrator of NASA. So, Winston, uh, I can only presume that he's there to give some congratulations, shake some hands, and say, well done, crew. Exactly, and it's customary for Mr. Golden to come down and welcome the crews back home, especially on a mission like this one that's garnering so much excitement. But uh, he's been a great administrator. It's wonderful uh, having him come down and meet us when we come back. And he is the man who personally green-lighted John Glenn's return to space, uh, uh, a decision that was made uh, after some agonizing on his part. He wasn't sure it was the right thing to do. Well, that is correct. He's the guy that can make the decision. So if any of you guys are interested in going, uh, Mr. Golden is the man to talk to. <laughs> yeah, I told you, Lovell's already got his application filled out. He's ready to go. Uh, once again, now it appears, now it appears, I've said this two or three times, but it appears that uh, we're going to see the astronauts emerge. Winston, the hydraulic lift is... Uh, is pretty close to the ground now and they're, they're lowering the uh, vehicle egg, itself exactly now if you remember when the uh, other people came down and went up they just used the ladder but it's a little more tenuous from the astronauts now after <laughs> maurice sendak's little bear vehicle that was once high above the ground is suddenly uh at all but ground level and uh that is a good sign uh for those of us waiting to see john glenn the door opens, we're told it will, uh, uh, the ramp will carry the seven astronauts, and you can see by the... ...don't have the contact with a, 
a bed like you would feel in, uh, on the earth is perhaps part of it, some of the noise, some of the excitement. Nevertheless, that uh, sleep study was designed to look at that very fact. And in John Glenn's case, uh, the issue was to be correlated with, the, you know, with the, the, the same problem which exists in the elderly population here on earth. Much of the studies which he became guinea pig for uh, were geared that I mean. Now, and perhaps part of the reason we've had a bit of a delay seeing the crew, in a balanced study, um, astronauts who uh, return from a long, relatively long duration stay in zero gravity uh, have a hard time uh, keeping their balance once they uh, take those first steps. They also have some cardiovascular difficulties uh, when they s get up out of that chair for the first time, oftentimes feeling lightheaded because uh, the heart grows accustomed to weightlessness and uh, more or less, uh, for lack of a better term, takes a breather. And uh, what they, NASA hopes to do is to come up with some kind of pill which they can give astronauts to help their heart readapt to gravity a little better. This is critical importance, of course, because in particular, the commander of the aircraft uh, needs to be on, in top form to do uh, what is the most important job he does, which is bring it home safely to the Kennedy Space Center um, shuttle landing facility, the 15,000-foot strip. Certainly, uh, Commander Kurt Brown didn't appear to have any problems with that today. The landing coming shortly after noon Eastern. Let's take a look at uh, what we saw here. It was an impressive sight. Uh, leaders used to call it a three-point landing. That would anytime something re-enters the atmosphere from space, it heats up. And uh, I, what uh, these many years afterward was your chief memory of of the moment when the flames were heading by the window? It's not unexpected. Uh, it's something you uh, you watch with pleasure because you know things are working right because that happens. No, it's something you guys watch with pleasure. It's something that the rest of us would probably uh, uh, panic. Television. Uh, NASA flew nearly 50 missions without uh, any drag chute capability on any of the shuttles. It uh, turns out that they were having some difficulty with brake wear and tire wear. Forecast. Uh, astronaut uh, Janice Voss, now what's your latest guess? We had a little false start there. Well, it's really hard to say. As you pointed out, Administrator Golden went on board, and it may be that they're just having some time chatting that way. And once you get in a group like that, the enthusiasm is so high and the excitement of being back and wanting to share all those experiences, they're probably all tied up talking to each other. John Glenn, because of uh, his age, uh, you know, he is in such extraordinary physical shape. People have uh, speculated, you know, will he be... ...thought it couldn't be done, and yet you are writing papers in high school and college about the thing. Uh, as you look into the future, or as you look even at what we've accomplished to date with the shuttle, are you astounded at how far we've come? Yes, in some respects, and in some respects I think that maybe we're a little bit slow because we did wallow around a little bit before we finally got onto our, our shuttle flights and uh, then the International Space Station. But I think that the future looks bright for us right now, and hopefully that the uh, public will support us because there's a lot yet to discover. You said we wobbled around a little bit. You're talking about those days after the Apollo program when, uh, well, Skylab was up. Well, the shuttle was okay, but when we tried to figure out how to build the space station, it, it went through various uh, uh, different uh, uh, programs, different uh, construction, whether it should be American or international. But now we have settled on a consortium of countries, and uh, we have a definite program going, and we're, we're on track. Now, are you, you concur with that? Oh, with I you? sure do. I wholeheartedly concur with yeah. that, yes. And, and it's good. Now, we're focused. We know exactly where we're going and how we're going to do it. Now we can achieve our goal. That's right. That, uh, let's talk a little bit, Winston, about that International Space Station. The thing we've noted is going to be the size of a football field, so big that at sunrise and sunset, I'm understand, I understand, those of us on the ground will be able to actually look up and watch it fly overhead as it reflects that uh, evening light. Well, that's correct. It's going to be visible from Earth on, on many of its uh, orbital passes. It's going to be incredible. And the kinds of uh, missions that are going to be undertaken there will be what? Primarily scientific? Primarily scientific. We have to learn how to live in space and live in space long term if we're going to venture out beyond our own backyard. 
So it, it, the International Space Station is going to allow us to do that. It's going to allow us to learn more about our own Earth from Earth observation type experiments. Earth observation experiments, of course, give us our knowledge about the ozone layer and about hurricanes and about uh, droughts and, and changing weather and climatic conditions. So the things that we're going to learn on the space station are not going to benefit us as we move further out into space, but benefit life back here on Earth. And again, that's what the space program is all about. This is what we call, you know, getting a quicker return back on our investment so that we help you and I today, not maybe our grandchildren, uh, but uh, the, uh, the investment comes back much quicker to us.